class, we're taking a grand Bull 4310 special field trip to Lake Tahoe. Yes, indeed, we are on the shores of Lake Tahoe, nearly 3,000 miles away from the University of Florida. The Lake Tahoe Basin is over 500 square miles. It is shared jointly by California. You can see some of the mountains of California there and about a third of the coast of Lake Tahoe is affronting on Nevada. So for instance, you can see right across the state line, what you would expect from Nevada, some casinos. Lake Tahoe is beautiful. It is crystal clear. It has been attracting people here for decades, if not centuries, because of the incredible clarity of the water. There is an absence of algae. The absence of algae stems from the lack of nitrogen and other things which leach off of the soil into water in most lakes, such as the cruddy-looking lakes we often have in Florida. And thus what we have is an ironic situation. Because of the beauty of Lake Tahoe, it attracts lots of visitors and those very visitors coming to see the beauty of Lake Tahoe threaten the beauty because of pollution, things that may lead to the lack of clarity of the lake. It has been estimated that if the lake loses its clarity, it would probably take 700 years through natural processes for that clarity to be restored. So what does Lake Tahoe have to do with business law? Well, there was a very, very important Supreme Court case decided in April of 2002 involving some landowners here along the shores of Lake Tahoe. It was an eminent domain case. Now, as you may recall, in eminent domain, essentially what a landowner says is the government has taken my property and must compensate me. Or the landowner is saying the government does not have the right to take my property because the property is not being taken for a legitimate public interest. That's what the Hawaii versus Midcap case was all about, the 1985 case that we've already discussed in class. The real tricky part in eminent domain cases is not when there has actually been a physical intrusion upon the land. If actually a piece of your property has been taken to build a highway or some other public interest, clearly a taking has occurred. But what if there has been regulation which has deprived you of the use of the property? In such a case, we have a number of court decisions which deal with whether that is in fact a taking for which the property owner should be compensated. Two of the key cases are the Lucas case out of South Carolina in 1992, which established what is called a per se or categorical taking rule, which is says in effect all economically beneficial uses, any use of any real consequence to the landowner must be deprived. He has to be absolutely 100% deprived of the use of the land for any economic purpose. And that would be a take. There is also a Penn Central case from 1978, which establishes more of a balancing test. This is sometimes called a partial takings approach. And in essence, what the Penn Central case talks about is you must deprive the owner of his investment-backed expectations. There must be an economic impact from the regulation and we look, thirdly, at the character of the governmental action. What's going on here? It's, in essence, a balancing test. Balancing the government's interest in doing what it's doing in the regulation versus the landowner's interest in making a buck or otherwise enjoying in his own way the property that he or she, as the landowner, owns. At any rate, this sets up the glorious case of Lake Tahoe Au revoir.